Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. In today's video, we're going to do a little teaching. So I've had videos called Terry's Tool Tips. Let's call this Teaching with Terry. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. So thanks for staying with us. In this video, we're going to talk about volts, amps, and watts and how they relate to each other. Now I'm going to do a little video clip for you where I demonstrate this and compare it to a garden hose with pressure and flow and quantity and compare that to volts, amps, and watts in electricity. And then when we're done with that, we're going to come back in here and we're going to do a little practical testing on some electrical appliances. We've got a heater and a blow dryer and a light to check out. So what we'll do is go out there and show you the garden hose analogy or scenario and then we'll come back in here and get started with the electrical. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the water system in your home to the electrical system in your home. Now it's easy to do to visualize with water because you can see water flow. You can't see electrons inside the wires flowing. So let's go through the parallels here. We've got the main breaker on in the house. We've got the main water valve on in the house. That goes through a meter so that you can be charged for what you use. Now throughout the home, the power is distributed over to the distribution panel. And in this case, that's where the branch circuits are. We're going to call this the branch circuit breaker, a 15 or 20 amp breaker. Then of course, off it goes through cables or wires or this hose throughout your home. Now right now, with this breaker in the off position, or this valve off, you see you go to this light switch, we'll call that a light switch, and we'll call this your light fixture, okay? Turn on the switch, nothing comes out, breaker's off. So let's turn on this main, this branch circuit breaker. Now we have pressure here. So we had pressure on the other side of this breaker, now with turning it on, we have pressure in the lines. That pressure is what voltage is, if you're looking at electrical. So this would say be 50 pounds pressure. In this circuit, in the circuit scenario, you'd call that 120 volts of pressure. That's what'll drive water through the hose. Or 120 volts will drive electricity or amps through your wires. So we've turned on the breaker now. The only difference between a water valve like this and a breaker is that if this was on and there was no resistance to flow, that water valve would shut off knowing you got a problem. So if this hose ruptured and was just flowing full bore to the ground, then that water valve would shut off if it was a breaker. They do make water valves like that now. Smart valves that'll shut off if there's a leak in your home, but that's another topic. So the differences between that breaker, a breaker in electrical and this valve is this will not trip. So I think you got the point there. So now we have 120 volts or 50 pounds pressure right up to this switch on the wall. Now you turn on that switch and you've got just a, a say a four watt LED bulb in your fixture, lamp. Turn on the switch, you've got just a little bit of flow going on here. So now you've just got a few electrons or a few amps flowing past that switch and through the light bulb because that light is what's causing the resistance. There's a lot of resistance there to electrical flow so you're not getting a whole lot of watts. Watts is the water that's going to fill your bucket. That's what you're going to pay for. Shut off that switch. Let's change that fixture out or change the lamp out to say a 60 watt incandescent bulb. Turn on the switch. As you can see, you're using a lot more electricity. You're using a lot more amps or you're using a lot more gallons per minute now with uh, less resistance here, higher wattage bulbs. So you're going to use more watt hours. Turn on that, put a 100 watt bulb in here and you're going to use a lot of watts and you're going to fill that bucket quicker. So you're going to have more watt hours used more gallons used, it's going to cost you more money. So that gives you an idea of the flow. All right, and you shut off the breaker. Now you turn on that switch. No current flows, no water flows. So to recap, voltage is the pressure. C 
current is the flow and watts is the accumulative amount of power that you're going to use, watt hours. So here's how we're going to set up our little experiment. Now to get into a circuit, it's not always easy, especially if you're looking at plug-in devices and extension cords or wall outlets. You don't have access to the individual conductors and to measure current, you got to get into the conductor, either the hot or the neutral, and get your clam meter around that single wire and see what the current flow is. So I had to build myself a little cheater cord that I use here for testing devices and, and getting on into the current. The other way you can do it is if you're in the breaker panel and you're checking current on a circuit and you've got the single hot lead coming off the breaker terminal, well there's where you can clip on your clamp meter and check the current there. But for testing, you might want to make yourself up a little device like this. So all we have is just a, a plug end, that plugs into an extension cord in this case, and then my female connector body on this end where the, anything I want to test can plug into it. And then I've stripped the cable here so that we can get around each conductor. Now you have to get around the individual conductors, as I said, either the hot or the neutral, because if you put your clamp meter around both these, you're going to have equal current, or you should have equal current in both the hot and the neutral, and they're going to cancel each other out because with alternating voltage, alternating current, what you're going to have is if you've got, say, 5 amps flowing in the black wire, you're going to have 5 amps flowing in the white wire, but they're going to be on the opposite end of the sine wave, so they're going to cancel each other out, and you're going to see 0 amps. So that'll be another, another uh, topic for another teaching with Terry episode, but for now let's check some current flow here. So first off, we're going to have to check our voltage. So our supply voltage, I'm going to unplug this light here for now, and to check our supply voltage so we know what our multiplier is going to be, we have to use our meter, state, and set it to volts AC, now this is an auto ranging meter, so we're going to auto ranging, but we do have to select the function to read volts AC. So now we have AC volts, it's just indicated way down in the corner here, there it says AC volts. And that's just the sine wave for AC. Now, take our leads. Take off the little guards here, because we've got to get right into this connector body. So use the common for the neutral. Neutral is the wider slot, as you see here, and the hot is the narrower slot. So we'll stick our common right into the neutral. There we go. Nice tight connector body there from Hubble. And our other lead into the hot slot. As you can see there, 60 cycles, 120.3 volts. So now we know we've got 120 volts. That's our pressure. So we will use that as the multiplier because volts times amps equal the watts. So let's go to the current flow. Okay, I've plugged in my LED light bar here that I'm using for some studio lighting. It says it's 65 watts, so of LED lighting, not a whole lot of wattage for a whole lot of light output. So now we've got to set our meter to amps. So there's the 6600 amp scale. And now we also got to push our function button. And that gets us to AC. Again, it shows in the bottom corner. That's AC amps. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. So now we're ready to clamp on to either the hot or the neutral and see what our current is reading. So let's go with the hot. Okay, so there's our reading. We have 0.59 or 0.6 amps. So it said 65 watts. Remember, amps times volts gives you your watts. So I'm going to use my little handy calculator here, 0.6 times 120 
that says 72 watts. So we're within the tolerance here. It said it's a 65 watt light fixture and we're reading 72 watts if we go with 0.6 times 120 volt. So next, let's try this little space heater I have. Now you're looking on the bottom here. It says it is 12.5 amps. 1500 watts at 120 volts. So notice there's a little safety switch on the bottom of this so it'll shut off if it tips over. So there's our heater. Set it on the highest setting after I plug it in here. Meter's still good, sitting at AC amps. Turn this up full bore. Now the rating of it said 12 and a half amps. As you see here, we've got 11. So 11 amps at 120 volts. Thirteen hundred and twenty watts. So a little bit under what it's rated at, fifteen hundred watts. That's a maximum, I guess. So we've got a little bit of a, a difference in the rating and the actual power being used here of 1320 watts and it's rated at 1500. So next up we'll test this hair dryer, blow dryer. So it says it's rated at 1875 watts. So again, if you know the watts, it did not list the amps that it should draw. So let's check this out. If you've got volts times amps equals watts, then watts divided by volts should give you your amps. So let's go 1875 watts divided by 120 volts. We should expect to see over 15 amps of current on this. So let's test out that theory. All plugged in, meters on the right scale. Oh, good time to test our ground fault plug on this dryer. It is tripped. Twelve point seven. So again, we're under. I've got it at the highest setting. Again, we're under a little bit of what we would expect from the eighteen hundred watts. 1875 I guess is what the official reading is and again 1875 divided by 120 we should have had over 15 amps but we only had 12 12.7 so we tested three things we tested an LED light it was the closest to the actual wattage we tested basically two heaters, a blow dryer and a space heater, and they both were a little bit under what their rated wattage is. So can't really explain that other than maybe they are getting a little weak with age. These aren't brand new appliances. So that could explain some of the difference, but nonetheless, it's pretty close to what you'd expect to see. Volts, amps, and watts. Again, volts being the pressure, the amount of pressure there to push current through the wires, Amps is how much is actually flowing in the wires and watts the power used. All right, so while we got this all hooked up, what we're gonna do now is compare our amp meters here, the clamp meter, the Kai Wheats versus a Fluke T5-1000. So here we got a nice reasonably priced meter. And this one is a Fluke and of course it's a brand name and much more expensive. However, let's see how the accuracy pans out between each other and like I told you, the black, the hot wire, and the neutral should carry equal amounts of current. So what we'll do is we'll check that out. I've got the fluke on the neutral. I've got the Kai Wheats on the hot. Let's turn this on. Thirteen point one on the fluke, and thirteen point three on the Kai Wheats. So very close to the same readings. So both I assume would be accurate. Let's switch them and see if the hot and neutral are equal and each meter still reads the same. If, see if the fluke now reads the 13.3 and the Kiwitz is a little lower on the other neutral conductor as opposed to the hot. So check again. Yeah, 13.3 and 13.1. 
let's swap those. Okay, ready to go. Pretty much the same readings now, just on the different meters. So you know these meters are accurate within very small percentage. And the Kaiwitz performs just as well as the Fluke T5-1000, I would have to say. So now you might be wondering how this all pertains to your kilowatt hours and, and how you're charged for electricity. So let's say we have that 13 amps times the 120 volts instead of 1875, we've got 1560 watts, okay? So you're using that hair dryer. Let's say you use that hair dryer for two hours. So two hours, which would be a long time to dry your hair, but <laughs> we're just doing a little bit of a, uh, uh, an experiment here. So that's 3,120 3, watts. You're charged on kilowatt hours. So that means that watts, to get kilowatts, you have to divide that by 1,000. Now you've got 3.12 kilowatts. So watt hours means how many watts you're using for how many hours or kilowatt hours. So again, say you, you were using that dryer for two hours, a long time. So that's 3.12 kilowatt hours. So if your electricity rate is, let's take a number, pick a number, 25 cents. So multiply that by 25 cents and running that dryer for two hours would have cost you 78 cents at 25 cents per kilowatt hour. So there you go. You can see how that can add up with all your appliances in the house and that's how your bill can get up in the dollars or hundreds of dollars and uh, of course that's half the fixed cost but you can always see on your bill what your actual usage was and what your fixed costs are. Okay, so as any good teacher should do, we're going to go to the grease board, or in my day it was the blackboard or the chalkboard, and we'll talk about some of the terminology and some of the formulas that we talked about. So we got power is watts, current is amps, potential difference is voltage. That's what they sometimes refer to voltage as is the potential difference. So volts, potential difference, current, amps, power is watts. Watts is equal to volts times your amps. And when you look at that, and if you draw it like this in a triangle all the time, then you can see that if you're looking for amps, you have to go watts divided by volts. If you're looking for volts, you take your watts and divide them by the amps. So like I say, draw that in a triangle like that, and you can always remember this little kind of a pie chart. Like I said, you're looking for volts, take your watts over your amps. You're looking for amps, take your watts over your volts. And if you need watts, volts times amps. And the other thing we talked about is watts and kilowatts. Of course, so 1,000 watts is one kilowatt, or one kilowatt equals 1,000 watts. And kilowatt hours is how many kilowatts did you use for how many hours? So how many watts? or kilowatts per how many hours is how many kilowatt hours. So thanks for watching this episode of Teaching with Terry. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something from it. Also very impressed with this meter. It's all you really need. It's reasonably priced. It works well. It's very accurate. So I can't say enough good about this meter from Kai Wheats, the HT-208D. Came with everything you've seen in the video, the test leads, the clam meter portion also comes with some RTD test leads for measuring for temperature. So if you want to pick up one of these, I'm going to leave a, a link in the description where you can order your own Kaiweets HT-208D clam meter. So thanks again for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click that bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Until next time, Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.